The Unfiltered by Jade. Jade. Welcome to The Unfiltered by Jade, where we get out of the box and dive into topics that are sidelined. I look forward to entertain, educate, and inspire. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, donate, and make everybody know about it. Beats by RB Records, a proud sponsor of The Unfiltered by Jade. Shopping assistance, your style, your budget. Our services include online and local shopping for individuals and businesses, personal shopping, purchasing of company and office supplies, importing and exporting small packages across Jamaica and worldwide, and helping you find unique gifts and items for all events and occasions. Contact us at 876-919-5195 or Shopping Assistance 2015 at gmail.com. Shopping Assistance, your style, your budget. Welcome back to The Unfiltered by Jade. Today we have with us Malik Kellier. He is a Crown Counsel in the Office of Director of Public Prosecutions, Justice of the Peace in Kingston, former chairman of the Youth Advisory Council of Jamaica, Talk Up Youth Senior Host, and that's where I met him, guys, Youth Leader, Lawyer Called to Jamaican Bar 2015 and Barbados 2017. Hello, Malink. Hi, Jade. How are you? I am doing great. How are you? I am so good. I try to be as positive as possible. I mean, you know, everything going on around us. Yeah. You have to just be positive. So yes. I'm exuding positivity again today. I feel it. I feel it from you. Great. <laughs> All right. So as a lawyer, we normally don't think that sometimes lawyers have problems, you know? Really? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I found this an interesting topic because... I see where personally my sister is a lawyer and I okay. see where sometimes she's stressed. So I said, you know what, let me talk to you and ask you about mental health as lawyers. You know, how is it that you, you deal with these situations? So I want to know, um, how long have you been a lawyer? And I mean, I, re- I mean, I read it, but how long have you been a lawyer and what aspects of being a lawyer interest you the most? Girl, like first you said, oh, you know, you see your sister sometimes stress. I can't forget into that. Liar, I always stress. <laughs> well, I, I only see her sometimes. Oh, okay. So, okay. it's so when I see her, it. she looks straight. <laughs> Girl, liar, stress all the time. You know, when you're growing up and you know your ears, so you're the chatterbox or the mm-hmm. little lawyer. Your fears. Go and go to law, man. You chat too much. <laughs> and you know, for me, my, my inspiration to become a lawyer, I remember. Initially, I was supposed to become the doctor. Because, you know, in Jamaica, we, we stigmatize, I want right. to use that word, yes. our children into lawyer doctor as the professions mm-hmm. i liked it side the sciences etc you know, but i didn't like it anymore okay. i enjoyed my literature my history but also i learned which is also good to teach your other listeners you don't have to do the arts to become a lawyer lawyer mm. is critical thinking so whether you're going to be the advocate in court the debate or the public speaker or the chatterbox as our culture classifies lawyers as Apart from those lawyers, you have the lawyers who are researchers or critical thinkers who just like to write. So draft mm. your contracts, commercial documents, etc. So I realized that, you know, why I like science is and it taught me analysis. The type of analysis I liked was written analysis more in terms of literature and explanation. So I said, you know what, law. And then I did, you know, when we were in sixth form, for example, I went to Cornwall College. Nice. They had, you know, the usual career days of the universities coming in. And I'll never forget, and she's actually still there, Mrs. Marjorie Bolero Houghton. She's one of the assistant registrars for student affairs and marketing at the university. She sold the vision to me. Nice. And so that's when I started law in 2010. And so I got called to the Jamaican bar in December of 2015. So last December, I celebrated six years at the bar. I still live in Omer, reached six years. Congratulations. Said, Thank you so much. So, <laughs> you know, I'm now in my seventh year. And I got called to the Barbados bar in 2017. Nice. So I'm called to two bars. And when you study in the Commonwealth Caribbean, 
you can be called to different countries within a region because we all study and have the same legal landscape. So I'm called mm. to two bars and I may be called to others. In well, yeah, go on, man. Yeah, girls. So <laughs> I, I am a Caribbean. I, I, I coined this term and I'm told it's still used because I actually studied at the Cave Hill campus for two years of the University of the West Indies. Okay. And so I coined this term Jamaican by birth, but Caribbean by integration. Nice. Because I call myself Mr. Kaiko or Mr. Caribbean. Why, you know, when we go to Barbados, Barbados is, trust me, a melting pot on the university campus of all the different Caribbean islands or territories. Mm. And I was, as you realize, I'm bubbly. I try to be so right. right. I have friends all over because I believe networking is important. And yes. So I know if I get flung to Belmopan or back to Terra St. <laughs> Kitts, yeah. I can call a class with us yes. at the airport. Yes, so yes, I'm yes. A, I'm big on relationships as well. Nice. But back to your question. So yes, I've been a lawyer for six to seven years now for Jamaica and two years below that, what, four, four, five? Mm-hmm. Barbados. Um, what interests me the most? In law school now, when I was studying, I knew for sure I eight business. So from high school, I never like no business subject, <laughs> never, which is interesting because today I still see myself as a, how to diplomatically call it, a semi-hustler. So right. you have to where the money reside, you know? So, right, right, right. But I'm not, I was never entrepreneurial. So the accounts and the POB, I never saw them as subjects that I would gravitate to. And interestingly, right. in law, there are a lot of commercial subjects that if you had gotten your foundation from high school or secondary school in terms of the business subjects, that would have been a good plummet. But it didn't, or it wouldn't reduce if you never did those subjects I wanted the commercial law. No, but that was never my interest. I knew for sure, as you realize, Yes, and the village lawyer or the chatterbox, I wanted to be an advocate. Yes, yes, yes. So in England in the olden days, and even the olden days here in Jamaica, the profession was separated into what you call barristers and solicitors. And I think I hinted to it earlier when I was saying to you that you had the lawyers who want to go to court and chat and trace of the judge and the client. Right. That's the advocate, the one who speaks. But okay. there are lawyers who don't want to do nothing with courthouse work. They want to instruct. They will do up the submissions, they will do the research, they will sign the contracts who are known as the solicitors. So that's the initial or the foundations of the legal profession globally. However, in Jamaica in the 70s, we fused the profession. So therefore, the term attorney at law or lawyer, as you know, it was coined. Right. Which means you have learned both the skill set of advocacy and the skill set of the solicitor. So we can do the two things. Mm. So for me, having learned the mix of the two, and I'm an attorney at law, I gravitated towards the subjects that taught me advocacy and litigation. Right. Because I, and I told you, I, I like critical thinking, but I also like to debate or have a point or a discussion with someone. And I think as well, another part of my foundation or history, I'm not from a line of teachers, but alas, I was born a teacher. I don't know how best to put it. Yes. And yeah, I was I reminding a friend, I was driving through Halfway Tree on the weekend, I was reminding a friend of mine, I was telling her that, you know, we were passing Halfway Tree, and if you know, there's sometimes on the roads, I didn't know the little vendors. I mm-hmm. saw a slate blackboard, they look a mini blackboard at your back. Right. Children. And I said, I, I see how sometimes the universe or your life aligns, you know, Jade, because my grandmother, my maternal grandmother ensured when my sister and I, I have a younger sibling, Jade, and she actually just turned a lawyer in December last year. Nice. So my mommy has, and we're not from a family of lawyers either. My mommy has two lawyers now as children. Nice. So you nice. can just imagine her emotions, I know. Yes. But my grandmother or maternal grandmother ensured when we were both three or four, I believe, for our birthdays that year, she bought us a slate. Hmm. And so we used to go around the back and teach the trees and twigs and our little mud children. That's right. And so I admired and I watched my teachers and the way they explained things going through school. I was a teacher's pet. I, I'm proud to say it. I don't business. <laughs> in high school and in prep school, when they used to say it, you know, as a young child without your self-confidence. It makes you feel bad, yeah. Yeah. But now, because my teachers and I have good, a good relationship. No, my one also when me left school, me can call it for recommendation for me. That's right. And that's the type of relationship, because chips I have with my teachers still today. Yes. So I would teach my fake children in my yard and then I emulated my teachers and the different styles to me, different teachers. And so I've even brought that skill set into law now because I'm nice. also tutor at the University of the West Indies. But I made that point to say, Jade, that I enjoy explaining things. So even in a debate, we can agree to disagree. Yes. But I don't want to be speaking at you. I want to be speaking with you. Yes. So I enjoy things that help me to develop my advocacy. And interestingly, 
I didn't want to be. So I work in the office of the DPP. So that's mainly criminal law matters. We yes. work or we act on behalf of the state or the government in criminal matters. So rape, murder, anything that you go against, crimes against the state, that's what we do. Yes. But it was just thrust upon me, meaning I enjoyed watching advocacy at any form, whether it's civil or crime. But this is the path currently that I'm on. And I'm on a trajectory because I also see how in this office you're exposed to so much. Uh -huh. Laws of evidence, criminal law, advocacy. And what it does for me is it sharpens me, helps me to think on my feet, think quickly. And as you said, you see, have sisters sometimes stress. It is a stressful job. I won't disagree, uh -huh. but it is sharpening my toolkit. So even in school, again, so we had this course, forensic medicine. I was telling even some of my students recently that you lucky you have it at 7 to 9 p.m. on a weekday. We used to have it where the pathologists come and I sat them. Can you imagine you sat there evening? Wow. You're supposed to be unwinding from four to wow. seven o'clock like and dead people and learn about <laughs> adiopostere and so and shot wound versus stab wound. But oh though it was squeamish and you know you want to hide your face, I said, No, Malik, think about it this way, Malik. You are going to become a lawyer where you may have to go on a low cost, a crime scene. Yes. Yes. And while it is a body and somebody is deceased, you have to try. Just like when you used to watch Matlock in the olden days or suits now or mm -hmm. how to get away with murder. Though it is a fantasy, in reality, you still have to put yourself in the position to try and figure out how did this incident happen. So when you're selling your story now to the jury or the judge, you are fully off faith yes. with what is there. And so for me, while I never said, oh, yes, I want to be a criminal lawyer from the get-go, and it's just upon me, I had an interesting showing how it is I want to be an advocate. And so that's the path I've been led on to. So the advocacy type course is anything that has to use laws of evidence to make submissions I'm interested in. I also still, because I think in law, as I told you, the profession is few, so you learn a little bit of everything. You realize in Jamaica, we used to say, since I started law, the 2010 to now period, the profession is now saturated. Hmm. And there's too many lawyers, which I said to them, when you study law, you realize there are so many, so many areas of law. You mentioned about commercial, mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. criminal, you mm -hmm. have civil, you have entertainment. No, may I hear somebody talk about fashion law? May I say fashion law? <laughs> every type of law. Because again, law is life. Because <laughs> everything we do, the rela the family, you have family law. The family yes. is a unit. So you have yes. divorce, you have yes. adoption, you have custody. That's a unit Everything. right there. Mm -hmm. You go out and buy things mm -hmm. into the store and a problem with returning contracts, sale of goods. Yes. So mm -hmm. law affects us in every way, every shape, way. or form. So every way. even when I'm explaining it to my students or I explain to people, I try to break it down for them. Yes, we all look like a lawyer. We wear the Hogwarts looking robe and the white something go out court and we look important and social. Yes, but we are telling your stories. Yes, I like that. And that's important for me. So yeah, so I'm interested in advocacy. Nice. What are some of the challenges being faced as a lawyer though? Boy, girl, what <laughs> only? So like, I've been seeing some memes recently. There's one, like, you know, the before and after, it split the screen. So as a child, I want to be a lawyer. It has a smiley face. And then it says five years later, the lawyer is a clown face. Saying, so you want to be a lawyer? Because, yeah, I mean, lawyer have a whole, whole heap of challenges, no, no matter what type of lawyer practice. Firstly, clientele your clients mm. are your best friend and your worst enemy people are <laughs> you. and it's the truth yes. so for the lawyers who don't work for the state but work on private and people retain them or they take legally the client is your best friend and your worst enemy. i've seen clients sink lawyers oh and what God. happened is the profession is regulated so in jamaica we have what is called the general legal council we call them the law police so they regulate the profession. They can get you struck off the role of attorneys. You can never practice again or what? suspend your discipline. Your, yeah, they're like the prefect body or the, the police of law. And so clients can be your best friend and your worst enemy. So you have it coming from your clients. We tell your clients that your work is never them work. And wow. so clients nowadays, I think, are more empowered because they know now how to reach, as I call it, the law police. Mm. So your clients stress you out. If you work in the courts, Judges it's expect true. a lot of you, and I think in our culture as well, a lot of, I won't say grubbing, but they push you, or they test you a lot. Mm. So you get it in court as well. If you're in the government service, your workload is heavy. Mm -hmm. I mean heavy, I mean for every 12 files I in government goes to court with, I meet 12 different lawyers, which means what? The basic maths, I never like maths, but if I go to court with 12 files and it's 12 lawyers coming, that means that that lawyer only come to court with, one day they get a file. Mm -hmm. So while I have to prepare 12 matters, they are preparing one. Wow. So the workload is there as it's well. It's more, right? 
in government, a big cry for many lawyers, which is the truth, and the truth is just the truth, is finances. Right. Government lawyers aren't paid well. We just and you not. know, people people don't know that because people think lawyers make a lot of money. Well, the ones in government, I can tell you for sure, without a bat in my eye or without any fear of any repercussion, <laughs> is we're not paid well. Okay. And I think since this pandemic, especially you realize, no, I know we're going to get to some more. People realize, and it's not being selfish, but the pandemic has forced us to realize you can't kill off yourself for a job that will replace you in a yes. after you're yes. gone. You have to take care of yourself and take care of your own. Yes. And if you don't have the resources, and the sad thing is money would work. If you don't have the resources, we can run out and go and say, here, I'm paying my bills. So I can't go to the supermarket and say, oh, I work at X place, so therefore I'm taking these goods today. Mm -hmm. And so that's another stress for lawyers as well. You know, the resources... As I said, the, the, the client keeping up with the regulations as well. So the law police regulates us. You have specific things at the end of every year to be able to practice the following year that you must do. So we have to keep up mm -hmm. to date with what you call continuing legal education. So we have and all that because of the whole COVID that we're now forced to go online. We have webinars mm -hmm. regularly to keep up to date on the profession. Right. Um, your accounts, you have to make sure that your client account, especially in private practice, is separate from your personal account. And many lawyers, I will tell you, have gotten into big boo-boos or trouble because they don't oh, take no. the client money. Or they don't take the client oh, money, but they go to the wrong account. Oh, and so, as I say, you have it coming from all over. All sides of the fence are some of the challenges. That, that happens. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with, you deal with con counter transference as a lawyer? Counter transference. And let's break down the word for them. Counter transference. <laughs> I you know, come in my ear this way, I say, why, Jay, give me that big word. What that word I mean? <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm going to add on top. I'm going to Google it. I'm say, what is this? Counter transfer. But I'm going to Google it. I'm say, oh! <laughs> so, as the root word, come with us. Now, you're the teacher coming with us in the primary school. So, yes, transference. sir. Transference. Uh-huh. So, transfer. Right. So, counter transference means now, from what I get in summary, is you transferring, and it can go both ways. Yes. You transferring your energy or your stress to the people you are working with. Yes. As well as, from what I understand, we can explain this way to your listeners, what you have been exposed to mm -hmm. is now affecting you. Yes. So, for example, when, the, when I saw the word, it lit up in my head because I said, especially if you're working a criminal practice. Yes. Nurse, yes. And I said, I, sometimes I don't see because I think because I, I, Malik, have such a very strong personality and I don't want to say I'm not an emotional person, but I know how to... Get, it's a delicate balance, but you have, to, you have to learn as well, especially if you're in this type of environment or work, right. criminal practice. To be strong, because if you're not, Listen. it will I, I it will kill you. It mm -hmm. will overwhelm you and kill you. And I can mm -hmm. tell you that the experience I had. When I just started as a clerk, so when I just left law school, the first place I started was in the parish or magistrate's court as a clerk. Yes. And I went to children's court. And the first day I was in that court, you read it on paper. So, you know, you're in school, you're reading the case and it looks interesting. And the man was stabbed and his wife poisoned him. And the researchers, but you're reading it on paper. So right. it seems like a fantasy or a fiction to you. Yes. But seeing it in reality, no. It lit me up. Yes. You know, put it, but it, it mean it lit me up. The emotion, you don't know where the emotion comes from. And just all at the truth. Yep. And that's mm -hmm. The yep. first matters I had back to back. A young lady came in before the court, a young boy. They were both, the girl was 11, 12, the boy was 14. Brother and sister. Oh, boy. And when the social worker started to describe his story to us, is that this mm -hmm. is a disposal of matters, I can discuss it now. Okay. The brother and his friends, after the girl's first flooring, first lady thing, mm -hmm. locked her in a room and raped her. Literally, this is an 11 year old, she just had her first cycle, <sighs> and they the, her brother, you know, their half brother, her. The, the two mm -hmm. of them have the same father, they have different mothers. Right. Him and his friend raped her. Do you know what happened next? She had a baby. Jesus. And now I'm there praying. Do, and remember, this is my first day on my feet. Man, you Lord, mm -hmm. I mean, I come up, we're ready to make a difference. And when I'm going through this filing court, <laughs> I say, What is this, Jesus? And I'm there hoping and praying, God, do please let it be the other boy's child. Because you know where I say, Brother and sister, quickly, I got the farm, I got mm -hmm. um, quasi mm -hmm. all of the old works. Mm -hmm. And then they're hoping, please, please. How was this discovered? Poverty again, because I was in a rural parish. Right. Her mother, and they said, Mr. Kelly, you lucky? At the best of her, you're seeing now, every time they would come to court, the mother would faint. Jesus. Because she just couldn't believe it. She, she just doesn't, she just can't process it. 
what the father did, because obviously he's the one with the money or the resources, he took his 12-year-old now at this time, pregnant daughter, and sent her out of the parish to another parish to live with some woman. Not her mother, you know. And thankfully, sometimes I tell people the community is good. The community is a double-edged sword. You know, we talk about Jamaica, walk back to old community where the village raised a child. Right. It was a community who discovered this child. They don't know her. They know that this lady that she's so-called with. Because I guess in his shame as well, he's trying to remove her from the original community to another right. place. Because the old community chatting about own son raping daughter. Right. So he's moving her out to live with this woman, heavily pregnant. And the judge had to get Lydia and say, get this child back in the jurisdiction. But her poor mother as well, poor and feeble and stressed out, couldn't even process what was going on. Oh my God. And they just had to give her a full talk. Mother, you have to be strong now. Yes, but guess what now? It is here, it's not going back. This is your child. Yes. And then I thought to myself, because I had another, it's just like how the whole thing worked like clockwork. Another friend of mine now, she's a gynecologist. Young intern, just look, young doctor, like I was a young lawyer. Yes. And she recorded, because she was giving me a little old wife tale and telling us about it. The time when people usually conceive is the time usually when the baby born. And she'll give me the jokes. They say, they say, one, two o'clock in the morning and Victoria Jubilee, pair baby born. Pair oh. baby And I laughed. <laughs> but I was using that story to say she was recording and giving us a joke. Say, Mimi no one no pity now because she said, the specific incident that she was dealing with at the time on the ward, the girl little and petite like you, Jade, and as bad as a tall trapped in Rasta Whoa. Man. Whoa. And she recorded when the girl was giving natural birth and said, Malik, it feel like say, she had got spit in that two hours she had tear up. And I'm oh saying, this is a, she was just describing just general right, childbirth, right, right. right? So now I brought that into focus with my 11, 12-year-old little girl before me. How did she push this child out of oh. herself as a baby? She's a baby herself. <gasps> yes. Right? Yes. She is a baby herself. So if a big woman will laugh after the dead have a exactly. child, exactly. Much Can less you imagine a child. Baby, Oh my God. And then the baby was born and the baby kept coming with them. And we are, look, then the DNA come back and lo and behold, worst fear, it's her brother. brother's Oh child. my God. And the last day, <sighs> and we are encourage her mother now, who is now the grandmother, you know, be stronger, be strong. Yeah, it's a year, baby, now, you know, because you have to go take care of the two of them. Yes. Get mm-hmm. your daughter back into school. Yes, she's yes. about to, guess what? Let her, she was a baby herself, Jade. Yes. A baby. Yes. She didn't even have two titty good. To show yeah. you how bad it was. She yeah. Was it. And yeah. that day, let me tell you, there was not one dry eye in the court. Oh, wow. We cry. As them come out now, we couldn't even deal with the next matter. We cry, we cry. Me... I don't even know where it come from. I... Let me say how this fly <sighs> come from. I didn't just <laughs> pull of water. When we look beside me, my assistant a ball. The oh police a ball. God. The it's probation it's... officer a ball. The judge a ball. We just a cry. We just a mm-hmm. cry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when we thought that was enough, all right, next matter comes right in. So me, oh, God. Come, come, Mr. Come, Mali, get it together. Next matter. This one comes in now. No more than six. She never reach your kneecap good. Jesus. And she come in, ma'am, and fear two and the pan fear Kimbo. Jesus. Man, you know, think about a six-year-old. Shy. Boy, hiding behind the mother from right, right. She come in with fear two and pan her kimbo and wow. I look up at the judge face and I roll her eye like she ready for to in the world. Oh my goodness. So judge touch her head side and go, hmm. Then the grandmother came in. Grandma looked like she soon dropped down dead. Just oh, no. all our faculties aren't here. Right. right. The problem, which I tell you again, the community can be good and bad. Yes. You know why this child could come in and look like that at six, like a woman? She was in the community selling. Ten and twenty dollar sex to taxi men, oh and my they were goodness. purchasing. Now you know who we'll pack up them bag and said this work is not for me. A six year old. We don't even know if a six year old even have a re- reproductive organ. What? So, think about me, Jay, dealing with those two incidents back to back. <sighs> I was mentally traumatized, and I said, "But law school didn't prepare me for this. No, they did not give me any counseling, any uh-uh. psychometric." Or social or whatever psychology testing, they say, sir, this is what you're supposed to do. It was heavy. Yeah. I'm going on my car, I'm big, 20 odd year old, me, Mr. Dunga, I'm gonna cry. Mr. Of course. I said, because again, I said to myself, you see, the, you know, we talk about crime rate in Jamaica, and we see these things on TV. But when, when you, you look off milk. the TV, you lock it out of your system or your yes. consciousness when you turn off your TV. You say, Mm-mm, yes. oh, Jesus, we're country gone. And yes. you lock off the TV. But seeing it right in front of you play out, I was traumatized. Yes. Yeah. I was exhausted. And I said, I can't do this anymore. This is what I want to do, but I can't. 
Mm -mm. And so as lawyers, as you say, it's something we experience. And that's just one incident of me experiencing that. But in other ways too, maybe it could be with your commercial client. I hear family is another dramatic thing because think about it. Your client comes to you for a divorce. And you have to also play counselor because yeah. they have to them hard about oh, the reality yes. oh, or why yes. it not work. And it become bitter <laughs> because of custody. Make it worse. The oh. children and the children will never want us trying to make it work for mm -hmm. the children. And we have to try to it work for the children, but it just was a work in the union, just mash up and there's no more. But you know, as a lawyer who just wants to just do the paperwork, get the divorce, you have to be <laughs> dealing with that as well. And it, it, it's, it's, I mean, it's hilarious sometimes, but this time reality is, it is heavy. Yes, it is. And we weren't trained for this. But yes. in the flip side now as well, as you're saying, you know, under stress, under pressure, going through your work, not taking care of yourself, dealing with your own issues in your own personal life also may transfer sometimes into your to them. Mm -hmm. and to them mm -hmm. because sometimes you'll hear clients and we're not saying sometimes that's a client can be double-edged they can be a best friend in your world and, but sometimes you hear the clients and largely just why my lawyer go on so we need another lawyer because yeah they're not gonna work out they yeah. must snap palm all of a sudden yeah and you, say, mm, you know sometimes these lawyers may be experiencing burnout yes because law is labor intensive whether we like it or it's labor intensive they have to communicate a lot of people they have to do a lot of work it's labor intensive and so it goes both ways. This whole concept Con of counter transference, and 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 with that, with that, uh, Malik, because it's so it, it's so strenuous sometimes. Do you think? And I mean, I mean, that's that's the next question, really. Mm -hmm. If you think that when lawyers are entering law school, if they should have therapy before, yes. like throughout I, the entire thing. I mean, completely. If it's even the final year of your final semester, whatever it is in your system of study, wherever you are on the road, because. I've even gone international to international conferences and hear them. There was a whole topic about this whole concept of burnout. Right. Lawyer expressing how, for example, it affected him to the point where, and he's able to speak about it openly, his marriage suffered, his mm -hmm. children no longer spoke to him, mm -hmm. and then he just lost everything. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's very important. They teach us about ethics and about maintaining the standards. As you know, the profession is stringent or is still very steeped in practices and privileges of the past right just for that whole respect and honor and dignity but they did not teach us or provide for us therapy and i think it's very important because when you come out as a rookie a young lawyer wherever you are in practice in whatever area or field you're going to be exposed yes to a lot of things a yes. lot of things and so you may not have a personality like mine and you're not going to be as strong as me and i'm not saying i'm the strongest person either but right, but well, you have to have some level. You have to have some. You have, to have some coping oh. mechanism, yeah. and so I think even in terms of the counter transfer, the best solution is we could have been, we should be introduced to it from the law school level one. Yes. But two, our bar association, so you know these voluntary groups that you join when you leave school, should be able to provide us with you know these wellness whether talks or sessions, or even you know have like a little chill room for example if you're at court. Firms as well need to employ this, you know, maybe have an in-house or invite a therapist every quarter, every yes. month, yes. end of month, just so people can feel somebody comfortable, confidential to speak to. You know, sometimes you may not be comfortable speaking to the same person within your office. Right. Yes. So, you know, some offices have an office manager or an HR unit. They could, you know, employ that to help lawyers to just let it all out, de-stress. Because we are human beings too, and I think people forget that. Yes. I also think it's very important that lawyers insist upon their self-care yes so for me in the last thing and i was sharing with people every year my new resolution is like i think every other person you want to get fit you want to get healthy you want to change your diet first two weeks of january and then it disappears you mm -hmm. start or disappear but i think since covid as well last year i finally did it the okay. year before 2020, I attended a male session, you know, just a wellness session. Young right. men, old men, just trying to empower us, you know, get healthy, get fit, improve your relationships, etc. And that man was there, young, young guy as well, was there telling us about health and wellness. And he really spoke to me. He's the owner of a gym, Alpha's Iron Den. And I was very impressed with the talk that he gave. And I said, Malik, you keep saying it to yourself every year. Start. Just start. I don't want to be a bodybuilder. I don't want to be no Hulk. Just right. for your fitness, improve right. your breathing, because... Innately, I am energetic. But okay. as you get older, you realize as well, you can't just rely on your innate energy. Right. You have to improve upon it so that you have more and take your vitamins and all those lovely things. And so January of last year, I said to myself, all right, Ma, we're going to put this on our list this year. Let's go. 
And then by the two week mark, I said, no, it, it just weighed on my head. <laughs> yeah, after, and I'm a person to very determined. But after getting it done, uh, I'm not going to satisfy. I'm not going to satisfy. Right. And so I reached me two week mark in January. I'm saying, Maliki, if you don't get it by the two week mark, you know, you're done. Right. And I reached out to him and I said, all right, you know, the Jamaican thing. All right, so me come next week. And he said, mm-hmm. no, you're coming today. That's right. And the rest is history. Last week, I celebrated my one year anniversary at that gym. Congrats on that. And, you know, I'm just, it's helping me to improve my breathing, just my whole strength, just the basics, just to keep a healthy lifestyle going. And right. so I made the point to say you have to find ways now to de-stress. So it helps yeah. as well. You know, in the, in the gym, I live with a large, it's, it's a way to heavy. <laughs> The energy, the endorphins that are released thereafter. It gives yes. you the energy to go through your day. Yes. It sets you on a tone, whether yes. it's in the morning or in the evening. So find healthy de-stressors because when I was even reading, many lawyers are unhealthy because the way they de-stress is coffee, 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 mm-hmm. cigarette, rum. So okay. many, uh, many lawyers are that tell you, so you get called to the bar and you also go to the real bar. Are drunks? <laughs> are smoke addicts? Yes, yes. Yeah. So yes. they run themselves into the ground as well. And I think my generation, we millennials and Gen Zers now have to change that narrative in what we use to self-care. Yes. And so it's important as well to reduce or minimize the effects of color transfers to self-care. It's important. So I make sure, for example, me, I manscape, I go on my money pedi once every month. Yes. The facial and massage. Take at least... Cause my phone hours of us give Look how long we take to do this interview over a year now, girl. We are trying this thing. I must say no. We have to get this done properly. Yes. But I do things to try and reset, refocus, rejuvenate me so I can go again. Yes. And so that will help with the self-care part of things. And in terms of as you're saying, you know, how we should be placed on therapy, I think it's very important. Lawyers need to, and I think because in Jamaica and the culture in the Caribbean is going to therapy and mental health means you're mad. Mm-hmm. I think COVID has shifted the focus and given persons more of an awareness and appreciation that, yeah, mental health don't mean you're mad. Nope. You have to take care of your brain because you have your brain run your body. Yes. So, yeah, therapy is important. I think it's very important. And we should try to employ or engage unique ways of getting that done. Yes, I agree with that. Um, in terms of, I mean, I think you answered the question about the safety. How can lawyers um, keep their space safe? And, and to help with stress. But if you can, if you can give us some more solutions on that. Apart from, as we said, you know, doing your own things. Mm-hmm. As I said, the bar associations are very important as well in supporting because you have many lawyers who just branch out on their own, set up their own little shingle and are trying to do this thing on their own without any mm-hmm. guidance or mentorship. Many law, all of us won't get sucked into a firm lifestyle or into the government service. So some persons have to just go out there and do it on their own. Okay. And I think this is as well where the Bar Association comes in as the great equalizer to take care of all laws, no matter where you work, what you do, to provide that support. And I think, you know, having, for example, a well, just like I told you, they have seminars for us. I know, for example, we in the Jamaican Bar Association, because I also send the Jamaican Bar Association's bar comes. So yeah, me extra, me know, me know, but as a young... <laughs> The young lawyers representative are one of the young and the youngest on the council, actually. And sure. so I can bring that youthful perspective as well right. what we expect as young lawyers. But we tried to have, or we've had, as I shouldn't say tried, we had a wellness week in 2017, BC, before COVID. That's and a so, long time, though. I know, We're right? Two but, you know, we had doctors come in, did the blood, ECG, all the checks. Um, fitness people were there as well. Um, the pharmaceutical companies, persons with, we had coconut water, we had healthy food to eat, you know, the salt fish, right, that's the nice. food, just for people to de-stress. And then we had wellness talks throughout the day. Since COVID now, DC, during COVID, we've been trying to do now those same talks again online. Okay. Have the therapists come in, just, we just a talk, we just a talk without talking law. Right, right, How right. balance self and family how we balance stress how we deal with stress what are some stress indicators because though we think we know we may not always know sure. you just wake up on my auntie today i just wake up on my ignorant today and i may not know that may be induced because of the work yes, yes. so that's one as two again another way in which the bar association can support lawyers is you know as i said have those spaces for example courts are a place that lawyers frequent have a robing or a de-stress room. Yes. Couch or sofa, AC, yes. Wi-Fi, TV. So people can just, if it's just to take their lunch time to just sit down in there, chill and de-stress, that yes. is as well. 
Yes, to create a safe environment. Safe environment for people to just be there. And again, I think what could be important is, even if not within the firms, and I think firms and government offices where lawyers work should have it as well, the HR support provide, not just tell us, oh, it's there. Right. Say every month between X and Y time, a therapist will be here to talk. If you want to yes. talk, you talk. Yes. So you can let it all out. It's important. Yes. And, I agree. you know, have those little, maybe... And it, it's good for even group synergy and trips. Have those hikes. And especially, yes. now, especially with the blended life that we're living with COVID now. You, you have to do it in big groups. You can do it in smaller Small groups. Small groups, right. Like a, a one Saturday or Sunday, you go up on a little hike, walk up a spring. You know, whatever it is. Just, just relax. Just, like, relax. And it keeps yeah. you healthy. It builds your synergy as well. And another way in which we can develop a safe place to de-stress. Nice. How do lawyers manage interest outside of law, seeing that law is a jealous mistress? Trust me, she is a jealous mistress, but you have to be, I think it's very important, and I, I try to do it as well. You have to force yourself because, again, as I said to you, you're killing yourself over a job that will replace you in a minute. Yes. Because when you're gone, you're gone. And I can use an example. A young man, very promising. He was a law president like me when we were at law school. He was working in the office where I am. He died in a car crash. Wow. And that was December. And by the January, though, you know, it's sad and we're mourning him, etc. But life has to go on. You have to go yes. on. Mm -hmm. Somebody was there to replace him. Jesus. And do the job because the show mm -hmm. was gone. And I'm saying, while I was just using that situation to just describe and say is, we invest ourselves in our work because we want results. Yes. We want to grow. We want to advance. We want to do well. But you have to remember, you are a person outside of being a lawyer. And I'm not yes. saying that you and the law aren't indivisible in your profession. Yes, but you have to have other interests and you have to try and further those other interests. And it means time management. Yes. That's the word I'm trying to say all that to get to the concept. You time have to balance your time. Yes. Because yes, for example, in my law, it's high intensity, it's a lot of work. You're up late, you're up early, you're doing everything. But guess what? Me balance my time. So uh -huh. Malik knows me still young, wild and free, LOL. <laughs> But I have other interests. And so, right. for example, I was a youth leader. And, and I laugh and I say to myself, the same way we were in school, I had this fanciful interpretation at school that, you know, I would turn law, everybody go change, I want to be involved. Nope. Nope. The same way we were in school, if me, I did no feature, me, I go still be the no feature. Yep. If I the class clown, me, I go still be the class clown. Yep. And if uh, me, if it's give the instruction, I'll be the village lawyer for the lawyers. And that is still the case. I'm still my village lawyer for my class. I'm still Mr. Jemmy yearly and tell them happy bar anniversary. These are the things they need to do. I'm still coming mal. Who do so on? And I'm like, you know, say so your classmate, that's why we didn't have the same school, Ben. <laughs> so I am the great equalizer or me right. in my class that everybody communicates with. But I'm saying that to say I have other interests. Yes. So I find the time for them. So yes. I say, okay, no, no, no. I have to cut down the work. No, work put on this. So next, yes. I have an interest in teaching. So, for yes. example, people are like, oh, you're a lawyer, I find so much time to do these things. I remind people there are 24 hours in, in a day. day. Mm -hmm. And it's how I maximize. I mean, you have to. Because yes. you tell yourself, all right, 9 to 5 or 9 to 7, not even 8 to 10, I'm working and doing the, the work that I am trained to do. Right. But there are other things in life. And so, yes. you know that I'm involved in talk of youth radio. Mm -hmm. and, and so I dedicate parts of my Saturdays to that. I'm a youth leader, so I'm involved in the youth advisory council. And I think what as well, too, and we have the good and the bad of COVID. The best thing I think has come from COVID is we are more awfully comfortable and forced to use online media. Yes. And that helps as well in time maximization because yes. the time I would take to commute from work downtown to get to University of the West Indies to teach has virtually been gone because yes. all I have to do now is just open my tablet, press uh -huh. start, good afternoon class, let's begin. Yes. The time I take to rush here or there is gone because yes. you now we have this media. And so you can even maximize more where you have two meetings, you have to be like, Lord Jesus, I'm going to run left this place now, run, go up a new king, so run up, down, down. Right, right, You right. can literally finish one if you're commuting and just simply switch to the next. Yes. So it allows you now to balance your time. So even yes. though it can still be overwhelming, lawyers can manage their interests outside of law by time management. And so even though it's still a law interest, for example, I'm involved in the Bar Association, but what it does do for me is it helps me to network with other lawyers. Yes. It keeps me aware of other trends within the profession. So while I am doing a specific or practicing a specific area of law, I can still learn or pick up from my colleagues when they're speaking about whatever they're speaking about yes. and not be lost. Yes. I plan events. I'm in the social affairs committee. So we usually have a bar dinner every year. I'm a part of that. We'll have a party for the younger lawyer. 
but you know that. So at least I can expose others to my event planning and management skills. Yes. And yes. involving my youth work. So though I'm a young professional, I'm, I'm still youth until I'm old and great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I'm still able to, as I said, talk up youth radio. I was the former chairman of the Youth Advisory Council of Jamaica. I was involved in the National Youth Parliament of Jamaica, where I served as Speaker of the House. So it was a time management thing, and yet I still have my work. Mm-hmm. That's how you balance it out. That yes. makes the difference. Because you won't have a life if you're exactly. continuously just investing in one thing. Exactly. <laughs> Very good. Tell us, Malik, how can we find you? So I'm on your regular socials. I have a Facebook, Malik Helio. Instagram at Malik Kelly, one word as well are the main socials. I'm also on Snapchat, Malik, that's my name. And I just recently <laughs> joined TikTok as well. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, all on the socials, you can reach me. And I, I think what people love about me, and I try to do it for myself as well, is I try to encourage people. Everyone yes. vote me and yes. encourage people. So you may want to ask me a law question, that's fine. Though it is, you know, lawyers have to be, you know, it's a contract and retainer. But can you, even if you give you the basics or direct you where to go, I have no problems doing that. Okay. If there's a question about a young person who wants to be mentored by a lawyer or get some information about why they want to be a lawyer, that's fine. I'm here. If you're interested in maybe studying at the faculty or studying law generally, basic information, that's fine as well. I have no problem sharing, interacting. I don't have a problem because I, I find my purpose here in this world is to illuminate the earth. That's right. And I so as best as I can, I share my skills and talents with all because... That's what we have it for, to share. That's right. So, Not to keep and it to I ourselves. Even, exactly. And as I, I even used to say, I still share it with my students. I say, I know one A and the teacher pain, but you have to work <laughs> for it. Yes. And me, me not one of them, I go tell you, I want A, no, just work for it and you'll get it. Me not be high, me not talk. It's there for you to get it. We have to work, I have to put you in the work. Yes. And many students in the faculty, I think, love me because I try to be as real and frank with them. Yes. I say, one of them came to me one day, sir. I don't think I'm going to be back next semester. You know, every year the universities struggle with finances and then yes. kind of crap down and stress out the students, you know. If they don't pay no candle exam, I said, let me tell you my story. Mm-hmm. And I can share a little piece with you now. When I came up to the campus at the University of the West Indies, Mona Jail, I came up and I can tell you, my father gave me a check of 60,000 Jamaican dollars. Mm. My mother had just lost one of her two jobs. Wow. And they packed me up and they proud enough because they carried me up to the university and then dropped me off. And with the little that we had, they packed me up and put me on my hall. I was on Richard Wood Hall. And they brought me around to where to pay the money. And they said, no worry. And I, you know your parents, you know your parents. And I saw the worry in my mother's eyes because right. she did not know where it was coming from. But she tried to keep her brave face. You know, she keeping her brave face because she excited. Her first child is going to university. Right. And she just said, I go, all right, money. I go, all right. And they drove away. And I stood up on the steps of the assembly hall and my ball. Wow. Coming, no, them, no, no, where it ever come from. Mm. But guess what again? Your personality and your conviction. Yes. I knew I was going to have my fees paid. So guess what me do? I find the student financing office. I'm a, every day in my park, I tell people, say, guess what? You're at the university to read for your degree. Yes. You must read, notice board, read, sign, yes. walk up and down. Yes. You know, make nothing pass your look. Read. It never yes. just come to come to you. You hear old right. people always say in Jamaica, God help those who help themselves. So me, I help myself. Right. I, I told the student this exact same story. I said, with you. I said, me check student finance door every day. What yes. opportunities are out there? And let me tell you every year for my five years of university wow. and law school, my final scholarship anniversary. Wow. And it paid for me. So I tell my students, listen to me. This is not the end of your story. Yes. I'm missing afraid either. The government have student loan, go and take it. Yes. I'm with the first day too. When I go to Barbados, no, I had to take it because my parents did not have it. Right. And the trauma I, I experienced again was I don't know if you've ever seen it in the paper, Jade. Every time they talk about student loan, they take a picture. A Listen to me, man. Listen to me. They lined the parking Listen lot. Listen to me, man. And they couldn't go upstairs. And the day I was to go you now to drop off my application, I started to breathe heavily. Wow. And I started to have anxiety. I said, this is what I'm reduced to God. Uh-huh. Like, why my parents can't afford it? Why? I'm a start, but I wish I remember. There's a lady there as well with her daughter. I don't know why I never got that lady's name. You know, sometimes a little guy and angel come to you. Right. And the lady did this in your barn. She said, Come man, stop the crying, man. Come man, you go, all right. You don't know this lady for Adams. <laughs> and she and me and her daughter sit down. And she go by with lunch. She told this lady, no, no, me from Adams, Miss Jade. Wow. And sit with dung and calm me down. 
I'm a caramel and me a cry and she a cry. I said, Malik, we don't have it. You have to do it. And then me dry my tears. Come and say, Malik, I go get through. You go make it. Yes. And then I saw other colleagues because I felt shame. Yes. I felt disappointment. I can't yes. afford to pay for my university. I'm bright. I reached here. Why can't I pay God? Why don't you give me the money to pay for school? Right. And then we stop. We just dry my tears. I missed the other one. I'm a classmate. They know coming. I said, oh. It's not so yeah. bad then, but guess yeah. what? The government money, the government has the money there for you. Yes. You just make sure when you don't do what? Just like order, give it to you. Give it back. Mm -hmm. and let me tell you, in four years, I am happy to say, my name they hide. Nice. We pay them back. Nice. And the rest is history student loan. I'm not one red cent owing because nice. I give them back because they gave me when I did not have it. Yes. So me give them over, give somebody else what? To yes. have it. And yes. so these are the things you have to encourage and tell people say, you're going to make it. Yes. And that's what I tell my So when the student came to me and said, Sir, there is no way. I said, There is, there a, is way. a way. Because here is my story. I am a testimony for you to see. There is a, a way. way. But guess what? You have to go there. Go look for it too. You're not going to yes. come to you. So you have to go there. And yes. so I just had to share with them. So me, I made them call Mr. Scholarship and Mr. Resume. What I mean, do mm -hmm. I'm every day by my WhatsApp status, appear, job opportunity, me, I share. And people say, Send this to me. I said, okay, I screenshot and I just lazy. So, <laughs> but I still I said it to them the same way because I'm about people and advancement. Yes. So scholarship time, everybody knows that you can come to me. I can tell you these are the scholarships that come out every year. Look for them. Do this, do this, do this. And yes. have people in your corner. That's what I said to me. Even though sometimes there's a lot of camera and people, and two people is sometimes, it's still good to have relationships. So yes, nice. it is. I agree. Me, me, I have a one somebody when I tell them, listen to me, scholarship season coming up. And that's what I did. I had two people and I can big them up now. One of my former teachers, my comes to the teacher at Cornwall College, Bridget Leckie, and the former counselor within the St. Jane Municipal Corporation, Suzette Brown, Justice of the Peace. Mm -hmm. Them, the lady there, let me tell you, say, from the bottom up, them know me from my idea, I mean, me. But you see, when me call them at any hour of any day, I say, boom, recommendation. Because you know, sometimes yes. you can get tedious, every scholarship want the same thing. Yes. But guess what? Them willing, Malik, no problem, no watch no face. Sign, pick it up, or email it. So yes. at least you have to have those two people, a teacher, somebody in the community, a community leader in your corner, they can say, we need a recommendation. I'll just tell them, say, it's a scholarship season. I'm going to be applying for about three to five. So when they send me a message, you know, but I get too vexed and miserable with me to pay for this. <laughs> and so because me have those people, me good. So yes. I have those people in your corner. And these yes. are the encouraging words I pour into my students and people I know that you are going to make it. But you have to also put yourself out there to receive and look for the opportunities. Nice. I'm never stress you out. I'm never over. To actually, no, you, no, you, you didn't. Actually, I mean, it's, it's, it's something that people should hear, whether in law or anything. Networking is important. Having certain people around you is important. I mean, sometimes, important. Sometimes you're like, oh, I don't want to talk to people. I don't. I'm not. You know. But putting yourself out there is actually what helps you to go further in life. Mm -hmm. Really. That that's have important. to have to have to have to have to. That's something important. I have to drive into persons these days, networking. Yeah, that's a bit, you don't have to, as you say, you don't have to be a people person up in their face every day. Oh, warm and bubbly, oh my God, oh my God. No. But building relationships, solid relationships that you can count on to support you as much as you support them is important. I agree with that. I agree with that. Thank you so much, Malik. I enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed this session today. I feel like I'm in a session. I feel like I was in a classroom. It feels as if I was in a lawyer's office. It feels like I was on site. It feels like I was in court. You took me back everywhere. I'm everywhere glad. today, I'm you happy. took me back. <laughs> so thank I you so happy. much. <laughs> I'm so happy and I do hope your listeners enjoy this session as well. Mm -hmm. And just remember, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. Yeah, don't make it. Thank you so much for that. And thank you so much, listeners, for tuning in to the Unfiltered by Jade. And we'll be back next week, Tuesday. Thank you. Whoa, 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 whoa.